Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on Procreate. This will be the definitive encyclopedia of blending modes in Procreate. So if you were ever curious about a specific blending mode and its best use cases, make sure to keep this video with you as a guide. There's also time codes provided in the description box below, just in case you need to skip or revisit any of these modes. So now let's get started. The first mode is normal. The default blending mode of all layers created in Procreate is the normal blending mode. Create a new layer and you see that the icon stands for normal. This mode keeps colors at their original state, fully opaque and on top of your base color. You can also use the opacity slider to add or remove the intensity of that color. You can tap on the blending mode icon to set the layer's opacity amount or a double tap on the layer will bring the opacity slider at the top of the UI. The next one is Multiply. As the name suggests, this mode multiplies the color of the blending layer with your base color underneath, resulting in a darker output. You can regulate the amount of darkness through opacity, thus making this a great blending mode for coloring shadows into your illustrations. Keep in mind that this doesn't really add any saturation to your shadows, so if that's what you're looking for instead, you can duplicate your shadow layer, set its blending mode to overlay, and tweak the opacity of both layers until you're happy with the results. Darken. This blending mode compares the colors between two layers and keeps only the darker shades visible. For example, by using this image of these forest leaves on top of my illustration, watch how the darker values are being revealed through the image and onto my base layer. The next one is Color Burn. Remember what I've mentioned on how Multiply usually creates these desaturated shadows? Well, Color Burn is the exact opposite of that. This blending mode received its name from the photography world whenever photographers wanted to burn the photos by overexposing their prints. So this blending mode will definitely boost your shadows as well as darken the overall picture so make sure to play with opacity and even painting with a color instead of pure black in order to achieve the best results. Linear Burn This blending mode is as if Color Burn and Multiply had a baby, which means that it produces quite dark, darker than Multiply, and saturated colors as well, but not as saturated as his parent Color Burn. Personally, I don't use this blending mode as much, which also is part of the message here in this lesson. There's definitely some blend modes here that we should put into our go-to toolbox of ones to definitely use, while others, such as Linear Burn, should be something that we should try it once in a while, just to see what they can do as a top layer in your illustration. The next ones are Darker Color and Lighter Color. I'm grouping these two blend modes here because I believe that these can be quite helpful, especially when adding shadows and highlights to a flat or cartoon style piece basically using a pure black color with a darker color blend mode and setting its opacity to a low value of about 10 to 20%, you will be painting shadows with 10 to 20% darker tones of your base layer. Paint with a pure white color on another layer with the lighter color blending mode selected and you will have the opposite result, which can help you to paint subtle highlights in your element. Lastly, darker color can be really useful because it allows you to have your outline layer actually at the bottom of your layer stack, just in case you ever need them, instead of at the very top, which is usually where we set any outline layers. Lighten, a very similar premise to the darken blend mode, but as the name suggests, the opposite result. Lighten compares the base colors of two layers and keeps on screen whichever one of the two has the lighter pixels. This effect is great for double exposures and window reflection effects to your illustration. More on this effect on an upcoming tutorial here on the channel. Screen. This blending mode is definitely inside my toolbox of go-to blending modes together with multiply, add, and overlay. Screen is first great for highlights. In the illustration world, painting with screen mode and a bit of opacity allows you to add highlights without burning the picture or the white levels of a picture. Screen also removes the blacks in the layer, so if you like to composite things, such as a wisp image or smoke into your illustration, just import that image, set its blending mode to screen, and you will see that the white levels will blend with the base layer, leaving everything that is dark or black hidden. 
Color Dodge. This blend mode lightens the colors of the base layer in an opposite way of Color Burn. Because of the higher contrast from the result of this blending mode, the midtones of the base layer gets more saturated. This blending mode became a staple on Ross Ross illustration work, for example. Just check any of his YouTube tutorials to see how he enhances his illustrations with this blend mode. Add. Add is short for additive mode. This is the brightest mode for you to create any kind of highlights. When used with lower opacity, Add can create some really, really nice photographic results on how the sunlight can hit certain elements, for example. Overlay. This is one of my favorite blending modes, if not my very favorite blending mode. Overlay helps you paint colorful shadows saturated but not overly saturated. It lets you paint highlights that have bold, rich colors as well. And that is painting with just pure white for highlights or pure black for shadows. It also allows you to add thoughtful gradients that add that extra dimension to your elements. I just love using the overlay blending mode as it is to me one of the most versatile blending modes out there for both light and dark values. Soft light. This blending mode is a funny one as I personally always call this one soft shadows because painting with black does exactly that. It creates much softer tones of shadows than if we use the same color with multiply or color burn on the same layer. Same can be said with painting with brighter values over the base layer. You get a softer version of the overlay effect. However, one of the best uses for soft light is to actually color your outlines in a smart way. Making sure that your fills extend to the same area as your line work, changing the blending mode of your outlines to soft light instantly makes them colored and respecting the same tones from your fills. And just like that, you can quickly get a feel of having your outlines colored versus just pure black outlines. Hard light. This blending mode can also be quite handy. With brighter colors, this mode reminds us of the screen mode, as it brightens up areas with a touch of saturation. Whereas with darker colors, it darkens areas with saturation as well. The reason why this mode is handy is because you couldn't execute in the same way with just using the screen blending mode. Because as we know, screen mode will only accept brighter tones to be painted over your image. Vivid Light. This is a mode that you definitely don't want to use it at 100% opacity. We could say that Vivid Light seems like an extreme version of overlay and soft light combined. With darker than 50% tones of gray, the image is darkened with overlay effects. Now if you use tones 50% brighter than gray, you get an extreme version of soft light. Linear Light. This blend mode is a combination of linear dodge and linear burn. Using the grayscale section in the color picker, you get linear dodge effects by painting with brighter colors. And when painting with darker tones, you get linear burn effects. Pin light. In this one, is the base layer who is responsible for letting the blending color to be more or less transparent. Anything over the halfway mark in darkness receives opacity, whereas anything under the halfway mark becomes completely opaque. Once again, these effects can yield some very interesting results, so it's more about playing with these blend modes at the end stages of your illustration. Hard Mix, a blending mode that fully posterizes your base layer, creating very harsh, contrasted images as you paint with darker tones, or a very blown out and contrasted image with lighter tones. This is definitely an experimental blending mode that you may use once in a rainy day, Personally, I don't use much of hard mix into my illustration work. Difference. I've personally used this blending mode quite a bit, especially while doing animations and films during my work career. And I haven't used this one for creating any illustrations, but rather to just make sure that two layers are aligned. So here on the screen, if we were to duplicate this layer and set it to difference mode, we should see a complete black picture. That means that the pixels are actually all aligned almost negating their effects. If we nudge the top or bottom layer just a little bit, we would start seeing some lightness coming through the picture, meaning that these pixels aren't aligned anymore. Exclusion. This blending mode inverts the colors on an image. Painting with full white inverts the base color values, and painting with black produces no results. Painting with a color inverts the colors based on that tone. So for example, if you were to paint with red, you will see the results of color into the blue range. Subtract and divide are opposites. 
Painting with darker tones on Subtract obscures pixel values from the base layer, while painting with lighter tones on Divide drastically brightens up the base layer. I've seen quite a few illustrators creating light effects into their illustrations using gradients with a Divide blending mode. Now for the last four blending modes, I'm going to bundle them into one section here, as they are also known as component blending modes. Quite simply, painting with hue blending mode preserves luminosity and saturation of the base layer, but applies the hue of a color you're using in the blending layer to the overall picture. Saturation preserves hue and luminosity, applying the saturation of the color you're using to the overall picture. Color preserves luminosity of the base layer, while adopting the hue and saturation of the color you're using. And finally, luminosity preserves the hue and saturation of the base layer, but applies the luminosity of the color you use to the overall picture. So I believe that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, a like would be super appreciated, as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews, and videos that will always make you a better digital illustrator every day. Now on the right side of the screen, there's more content for you guys to watch. One is my latest upload, and the other one is a video that YouTube is recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.